Hey everyone, today's going to be a really cool video on Dodge and Burn. Now this is going to be a follow-up video to one I'm going to link in the description. And the one in the description is about the different methods of Dodge and Burn um, that we have an infinite retouch. And we have a method which I think is the most accurate one out of all of them. It's definitely better than the ones that I've seen. And I wanted to express and answer some of the questions as to the ones that we got in the video, which were why, why is it more accurate and um, how was it made? And the first question that I could answer um, is that once you did check out that video, you'll then see our different methods of dodge and burn. And we're specifically talking about infinite curves today versus the standard curves, as well as the 50% gray layer. And uh, we are gonna be comparing them. And the way that we, we kind of made this is our team at Infinite Tools um, used multiple images from multiple cameras and sensors to, to find the most accurate way of dodging burning to ensure that we get the best results possible. And again, one thing I want to preface this by saying is that based on your camera and your lens and the lighting conditions, it might not be the best method. It might change completely. The standard curves might be better. So keep that in mind. This is the scientific approach, but the actuality and the reality might change. But the good news is that with infinite retouch, you have two buttons, so you can decide to keep them both together. So just, it's, you know, great to, to show you. But again, let's just go back into it. And uh, we used a ton of different files and cameras and whatnot, and use this color checker to see um, how the results play out in reality. And we're going to look at that today. So color checker, you know, typically is there. It's great for seeing the accurate representation of all the colors, and you can use it to make sure that your photo is perfect, whether you're doing products or something color sensitive. So we have um, a plus one and minus one folder here. Let me just turn that off for a second. A plus one shows a one stop increase in exposure, which is an actual stop of increase. And we put it as a smart object at the bottom here as this one layer. And we have these three methods. So first we have the soft light method, which is either um, you know, painting white or black with a brush on a layer that has a soft light blend mode. And that's what these results emulate. And I just use a solid color fill set to black because this emulates if the entire canvas was black and you painted black everywhere and set it to soft light, that's what it kind of looks like. So you can see here that the results are not the best and uh, it comes with a lot of saturation and contrast issues. And again, this is all determinant on the files that you're using. But uh, then we have the um, optimized curves, which is basically the standard curves methods. I call it the optimized curves method because when I click on it, you can see in the properties where that point is placed is strategic in order to optimize the best results possible for a single curve. There's already an upgrade from the standard curve that you're used to using from uh, any dodge and burn method you do with a single point. However, we've modified it to make it a little bit better. Now, then we took it a little bit further and we came up with our infinite curves. So the way that I actually got this into this folder was I hit play on infinite curves. And then the, the curves that are in there, I just took it and brought it into the plus one folder so that you can see, you know, in a nicely stacked way what it looks like. But you can see here that the actual curve itself here, when I click on it, you can see there's three points, number one, and they're crafted in order to try and be as precise as possible. You can see here that it is really precise. Like this is difficult because in camera raw or your raw processor, you can make use of that raw data. But once you open a file in Photoshop and then you try modifying the exposure plus or minus one, it's not accurate. And it's not accurate in a real world setting as you would normally have with a raw file. So it just shows you that we've taken a little bit further and uh, improved on it quite a bit. But keep in mind again is it is based on your different cameras, your, your end result, and the standard curve might work better or the infinite curves might work better. So have a, have a play with it. Um, next, let's also go down to uh, the minus one. And before we go down there, I also want to say that this uh, link to this uh, layered file will be in the description as well, so you can play with it. 
and have a have a see as well to see how you do and um, you can use my layers if you want or you can reconstruct it and download infinite retouch it's uh, completely free as i mentioned unless you want to save or modify anything and then you can actually do it yourself which is really fun to do actually so let's go down to our minus one and minus one again is darkening we're going to darken as you see here uh one stop as well we've darkened it one stop so then we're going to open it up again i'm going to use a soft light blend mode mm, it's okay you know it's not uh actually it's not that great <laughs> it's uh it it washes things out i don't think it's really that great next we have our optimized curve and this which is what i'm really proud of our single point curve built in infinite retouch is a positive we you know i think personally this looks really really good it's close enough the only differences here is that sometimes there's some saturation issues some it's not there yet so maybe we can bring the curve up a little bit down a little bit you know play around depending on what colors you're you're doing but this shows you a ceiling basically it shows you the ceiling of how far it goes you obviously when you are dodging and burning you might not hit the ceiling of a complete you know one stop um for example like over here you can see that it's still darker than over here so maybe you would just make another one and continue going forward but um, you might still see some disparity going on but if you want to see something really cool check out the infinite dodge so when i click on that you can see here it has one and you can see here that you know there's some colors which need a little bit more work and uh for example these green tones here are really nice um, these purple tones are nice the yellow tones are nice the brown tones and the earthy tones are beautiful the only thing there is we need to push it a little bit further because we've kind of capped you know we need to push it a little bit further than um further than that to meet one stop of the exposure brought up so basically this works but the only thing is it's a little bit darker we just need to bring it a little bit more so what i did was i just added um, a couple more and then i masked it in and you can see here that it matches really nicely so i did a little bit more um, i added a couple more infinite curves here for my dodging and i just had a few for different squares basically but normally i would just do it in one layer and, and work around uh accordingly and and bring it in really nicely and the way that i would do that from scratch is let me go and show you um if i had to do it again i would just duplicate this infinite dodge i would add a black mask like this and then with a brush like that i'm going to just make sure it's set to white i'm going to go ahead and change my flow to around two or three percent and then I'll have my opacity at 3%. And then what I'll do is as I'm brushing, you can see here that it blends in like that. And there you go. Simple. And so for me, this is a really good foundation starting point to show you that using this curve over here with our three point system that we created from scratch shows you what can be done with curves in Photoshop now, where before you might not have been able to get it. As precise but again as i mentioned this also depends on your camera the brand that you're using the files that you're using etc and the results might be better using the optimized curves or the standard curves uh in in our infinite retouch but again as i mentioned again it said i said it to optimize curves as a description but in infinite retouch the method that you're looking for is just curves okay um, but yeah, I was excited to show you that. I hope you enjoyed that little demonstration. Um, I know we've been getting a lot of questions on how it was made and, you know, why is it so and quote unquote better? Uh, but that's a good uh, example of what went into it and the time that we spend on just one part of Infinite Retouch. And there's so many other ones that the team put so much work into. Like we have our grain engine, we have sharpening options, we have export options to make it super easy to export images without even knowing the size or the crop or whatever it's it's fantastic please check it out there's videos on every one of these topics on our website and uh on the infinite retouch page if you just scroll down you will see that it uh it has all the tutorials so anyways please uh download this file download infinite retouch come join our groups on facebook i'm going to leave a link in the description as well and subscribe and i can't wait for the next video and i hope you really enjoyed it if you have any questions please feel let me know and connect all over social media.